Despite common misconception, the loofah sponge in your bath didn't come from the sea. It grew on a tropical vine that's related to the cucumber. When they're young, loofah gourds resemble zucchini, and they can be prepared the same way. If left to mature, they get big, sometimes as much as three feet long, and their insides turn spongy but tough. Loofah has been made into everything from industrial filters to shock absorbers, fabric, and even building materials. Humans have used loofah for so long that researchers haven't yet pinpointed its precise origins, but it was most likely domesticated in tropical Asia, possibly India. It reached China around 600 AD and spread to Europe in the Middle Ages. In the 1890s, Japanese farmers began producing loofah for industrial uses, including as filters for diesel and steamship engines. The U.S. Navy was Japan's best customer for loofah until the attack on Pearl Harbor during World War II disrupted trade. After trying and failing to grow loofah in Florida and California, the U.S. turned to growers in Latin America to satisfy the Navy's need for loofah. It was such an important wartime commodity that selling loofah for cosmetic or other non-war-related uses was illegal. In Latin America, La Estropajo, as loofah is known, is still grown and appreciated. For all of its incredible material uses, it's easy to overlook the loofah gourd's culinary ones. And that's a shame because the immature fruit is delicious. As a member of the cucurbit family, its long vines produce both male and female flowers. The ovaries of female blooms grow into a fruit that's quite similar to cucumber or zucchini. For eating, it's best to pick when the fruit is under eight inches long. Over the years, many southern gardeners visiting Baker Creek have asked about an old-timey heirloom called vining okra that they remember seeing in their grandmother's gardens. True okra is a member of the hibiscus family and doesn't have a vining habit. Vining okra is Lufa acutangula, a lufa type that has pronounced ridges, and the immature fruit really does resemble okra. In steamy Gulf Coast states like Texas and Florida, vining okra was often grown up an exterior wall in the days before air conditioning. The immature fruit was also dipped in batter and fried for mealtime. The rough fibers of mature loofah fruit have long made an amazing scrub sponge for cleaning pots and pans. And somewhere along the way, people started scrubbing themselves with it. It may be that the Japanese tradition of kanpu masatsu, a dry towel rubbing technique, inspired the friction bath. This health and beauty fad took off in 19th century America when doctors advocated vigorous scrubbing to draw toxins out of the body. Women were particular fans of the practice, and loofahs were an ideal substitute for the stiff, bristled flesh brushes or Turkish mittens usually made from mohair. Though it is a tropical, cold-sensitive vine, gardeners in most climates can grow loofah gourd to some degree. Loofahs need a frost-free window of about three and a half months in order to mature, so northern gardeners can plan accordingly, knowing that the gourds might not mature fully before first frost. You'll want to give loofah vines a place to climb, like an arbor or a fence. Pollinators love loofah blooms, and if you're growing loofah to eat, be sure to check them often because the fruit blends right in with the fast-growing vines. Thanks so much for watching Seed Stories. We love bringing you the backstory on these amazing varieties. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you won't miss a single episode.